Holy Wiremod here, hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial in the GLUA Pro series where we're going to be taking a look at the table data type as well as explaining how libraries actually are worked and stored and all that fun stuff. So let's start with our initial setup and we're going to use the print command here to separate everything and we have init shared seal ended as usual and of course our console on the side. So let's start with the table. Now a table is simply storage for different data types. So we have our first data type. If you recall, we have the string data type. We separate the entries with a comma for tables. Second data type, we have the number. Then you recall we had Boolean. We had nil as well. However, when we put nil into a table, it doesn't actually work. So we can also put the function data type here. And of course, a function would have an argument one to it, have an argument two to it. We'll get into functions in a future tutorial, but now you have a head start. So you'll be prepared for that tutorial. All right, so instead of using the print command to print the table, it's just going to give us a table with a hex value. It's not very useful for us. So let's get some information about that table with the print table command, which is specifically for tables. So now when we print it, we can see all the information that's stored on our table. So what does all this mean? So on the left hand side, we have the numbers one, two, three, and four. The one, two, three, and four are key values. Key values tell the, the program where to index certain values on the table. So our first value, if we were to grab a value from the table as such, let's say we want to grab value one. Well, we grab the string. Let's say we want to grab the number. Of course, we grab the Boolean with three and we grab the function with four. And that's how we do all that. Very easy. Now notice that the table here is numerical, which means that the key values are numbers. And this is another way of actually assigning a key value to a table. So we'll have three equals to the Boolean and then four. And the second thing I want to point out is not only are the key values numerical, but they're also increasing sequentially. So the, this table then is numerical and sequential. And that's going to be important for a later thing in this tutorial, which you'll see in a little bit. So another way that we can actually define a table, and actually let me prove to you first that this is a valid form. As you can see, we use print table. When we put a, a value such as here, it returns an error. So let's put table, and that works just as fine. Another way we can actually store this information is we can say table, index the first key value as such, and then we can say, we'll put lowercase string so you know it's different and I'm not cheating here. Uh, let's put the number one here for the second key value. For the third key value, we are going to put, well, we'll put false instead of true. And there we go. We have string one and false, and that works just well. So then let's say instead of numerical key values, let's use string instead. So we'll say string, then we'll say number for the data type number, and then we'll use Boolean, of course, for the data type Boolean. And there we go, we have Boolean, number, and string. Now notice the order was not preserved, as the same as, as I typed it here. In fact, it was alphabetized. So for example, if I, I put number here, just to show you that it's not simply being reversed, still Boolean, number, and string in alphabetical order. So keep that in mind when you're actually organizing and structuring your tables. Of course, likewise, if we want to grab a specific value from this table, we put number or we put Boolean if we want to get that false. If we want to get that string, well, we put string and there you go. That's how you grab the values there. Now, let's say we want to increase the value of number right here. So we'll, we're going to put number and we'll put table equals table plus one, just like that. And now we have two. Remember, we can't do this format or this format or this format. Those do not work in Lua, if you recall from prior tutorial. So now we have two, but I'm going to get rid of that. And now it's going to go back to one, just like that. Alrighty then. Uh, let's say now we want to copy the table over, but and we're actually going to make a clone. So this clone is going to be indexing to the same table as table. So when I do this and I go here with the print table, it's going to print all the values here. Now, what's interesting about this is when we get rid of a value from the table, so let's say I want to remove Boolean, I'd simply set it to nil as such, and now remove the value from the table. When I affect table, it affects table B. 
when I affect table B, it affects table. However, 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 when we get rid of table altogether, we still have table B indexing to the original table that we defined here, even though table now is set to a nil value, which is going to lead to an error. Thus, we have to print it, which is the regular print command. So that's very useful information for you to have. Now let's say that we want another method of indexing values on the table. Well, we can do this by saying instead of string, how we'd normally get the value for the index here, we can also index by doing a dot and string. And there you go, gives you the string, gives you the number, that's fine as well. And notice, if you recall from how the libraries look, such as math.py, or math.round and so forth, it's the same exact format. And that's because a library is a table with indexed functions. Okay, so if we go here and we go print table, and let's say we want to actually go to get the table library, there we go, we have every single function and the table library. And of course you can find all those on the wiki. So let's go here and we'll go to table. And there we go, we have all our different functions associated with the table library. So there you go, that's that's how libraries work. And actually you can extend onto the library, you can add your custom function and whatnot. And we'll get into that later when we're doing add-ons. So let's play around with the table library. So first I'm gonna start by creating three unique tables. Table and table B and table C. Table, we're going to have one, two, three, four, and five. Table B, we're going to say hello, and then we'll say my, and then we'll put is, and we'll say holy wire mod. Table C, we're going to say 10 is equal to soup, five is equal to is, and then we'll have, uh, let's say, actually, we'll index it like this just to show you that you can do it. We'll have three is equal to good. So all three of these methods of creating a key value are valid and they will work. And let's say that we want to actually grab the number of entries in each table. So what we do is there's a command called table count. So this function, what it does is it actually returns the number of values in the table. So for table, we have five, that's good. For table B, we have four, and that's correct as well. Table C, we have three. Now what's nice about table count is that it doesn't matter if the table is sequential and numerical. So as you can see, this is not sequential. It's going 10, 5, 3. It's not numerical either because the key values are also strings and numbers. So it's not strictly numerical like these are because by default, if you remember our first table, they were automatically assigned to numbers. So to emphasize this point, if you recall, to get the number of entries for a string or the number of characters on a string, we'd use the pound symbol just like this. We can do the same thing for a table. That works too, but it must be numerical and sequential. You cannot do it for table C. As you see, it returns zero here, as it's, it has no way to count how many uh, entries are in here because it does it by key value when you use the hashtag or the pound symbol. That being said, let's continue on with the table library and we'll do table insert. Now what table insert does is it will take some table, so we'll have table, and let's insert the value six and we'll print out six. Now it's printing out the key value in which the value was inserted at. So just to kind of show you here, we'll have print table, do table, and then we will put that after actually. And as you can see it, key value number six, there is the value six. Very good. So let's look at table B and let's insert something into there where there's strings. So actually, we don't even have to print this out. We'll just put insert, and we'll put table B. And at the third key value, we want to insert name. And then we'll print table, 
table B. There we go. Hello, my name is Holy Wire Mod. Now, what's very nice is there's another command in the table library, which is called table concat. And just like a string, how you can concatenate a string, you can use table concat to convert a table into a string. So we'll say table, and we're going to separate each value on table by a space. You can put comma here, you can put you know, whatever you want here, but we're going to use a space, and that's going to make a nice sentence that says, hello, my name is Holy Wire Mod. So there you go. Another nice thing that we're going to go over in our last one that we're going to be messing around with for this tutorial, as you do have access to this on the, on the wiki, on all these other methods or functions, and I encourage you to play around with this so it'll help your learning experience, is we're going to go over table random. And mainly because there's an efficient way to do this and an inefficient way to do this. So it's we're going to say that you rolled A, and then we're going to use table random. And then we're going to say table, and we'll put exclamation point just to emphasize how excited we are to know what we rolled. So it says you rolled a 4, and that got a random value out of here plus the addition of the 6 right here from table insert. The problem with this is it actually iterates through the table twice to use table random. So this is not an efficient way to do this. Instead, what you should be doing, and this will sum up a bunch of what we learned, is we're going to index a number, which is a key value here, math.random, and we're going to use the hashtag here, or the pound symbol, to get a random value from table. Okay? And that's going to produce the exact same result. You rolled a 6 this time. Oh, lucky us, huh? Alrighty, so there are, like I said, many more functions in the table library that you can play around with that have excellent examples in the wiki, so it should be easy for you to follow now that we've properly went over the tables. There's a lot more that you can actually do with tables, which we're going to get into later in the series after we cover some more basics. But until then, if you have any questions, feel free to leave us on the comments section below. If you like to comment, as always, like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.